look, they may see this as an election issue. We see it as a right of women to make their own bodily decisions. And that's what the states like my state have the ability to put that in. States like Georgia force women to cross the border and then we have a death uh, of Amber Thurman. So let's be very clear. Trying to cut hairs on an issue on this is not where the American public's at. They want the restoration of Roe versus Wade. Vice President Harris said she would sign it. That's what we'll do okay. when we're elected. But to be clear, the Minnesota law right is far beyond Roe v. Wade. And about the Amber Thurman case in Georgia, her family has, and it's tragic, she is a young mother who left behind a young son. But what her family has said is it was a complication from an abortion pill that she received and she didn't get proper care when she went to a Georgia hospital, which had multiple opportunities to intervene there. Her own attorney the family's attorney says it wasn't the Georgia law, it was the hospitals. What he claims is malpractice, not treating for her when she clearly showed up in distress and still had the byproducts of her pregnancy because of that rare complication from the abortion pill. So just to be clear on the Georgia law and how her family and her attorney sees it. As you saw from the intro, Tim Walls went on Fox News to have a debate, not a debate, but an interview with Fox News. And this is something that I want Kamala Harris to go through. I don't want Tim Walls to be the only one getting grilled by Fox News. I need it from, for Kamala Harris as well. Because if you see the difference, you saw the difference. She wasn't being combative. She didn't call him misinformed or none of that. She just said, hey, there's some discrepancies from what many people perceive is a lie from you, Tim Waltz. Here is what the Wall Street Journal, and she, sh like, she showed it. Hey, look, this is what I'm referencing here, audience. right? And this is, the, this is why I laugh at liberals when they condemn Fox News. To me, if I had to go to, to between two biased sources, CNN, bias. Fox News, bias. Fox News is more trusted because Fox News can show me, hey, look, this was stated by another source, Wall Street Journal, saying this about you, Tim Waltz, and how on the debate stage you said, oh, that's not true. We don't have an abortion ban. And she also highlights how Roe v. Wade, where even if Roe was still ex exists today, that is still an extreme position to allow essentially unrestricted abortion. And this is the problem I have. It's like, yo, abortion extremism is tolerated but if you say you want to ban abortion, for some reason that's extreme, but it's not extreme to have no restrictions on abortion or have, a, or, or have a, the ability for someone to abort a baby in 30 plus weeks in the third trimester. Make it make sense. Nowadays, right now, they're pretending to be moderate, but this is why the left Democrats don't go on Fox News because of the pushback. They don't want to be, they don't want those optics of them being pushed back on, on their false claims. And in this clip I'm about to show you, because I told you, I promised you, I'll highlight the differences. Here's the difference between how she fact-checked, uh, how fact-checked on Tim Waltz, and then compared to this clip that I found on ABC of someone trying to say uh, someone was lying about the rhetoric from the Democrats. And you're going to see the difference of how they fact-check the opposition. Let's take a look. Wall Street Journal says this after you were chosen to join the ticket. As the Democratic governor of Minnesota, Tim Walt signed into law initiatives allowing immigrants in the country illegally to apply for driver's licenses, qualify for free tuition at state universities, and enroll in the state's free health care program for low-income residents. Um, are those not magnets to draw people here many times on dangerous journeys for themselves? And why should your taxpayers in Minnesota or across the states pay for those programs? Well, that, that's not the vice president's position, but I will say this. Minnesota ranks as a top five business state. We rank as a top three state for uh, children living and with a top state for health care access. I would also add this. We also have some of the safest roads. We're talking about to go the to president of the United States getting, practically getting killed. And, okay? we, say, and we all topic. condemn that. You're, you're, you're hitting Democrats, 20 different topics The Democrats condemn that. And but the lies, the floodgate of lies must stop. What lies? Stop. Like that President Trump's going to monitor women's pregnancies? Oh, well. Oh, that's Project 2025. It has nothing to do with President Trump. But you know what? It's a good talking point for the Democrats, so they keep saying it. They lie all the time. Oh, wow. We have some of the safest roads. Look, at, look how he dodged the question. Dodged it. Look at the violent aliens. Illegal alien homicide and sexual assault convictions by detainment. Detained blue not detained, red. Look at the numbers. This is from the, the data from the U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement. You don't see a problem with this, 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 this chart? But you want us to give them free this, free that. And instead of answering the question, hey, do you believe taxpayer money should be funding all this kind of stuff for people who didn't pay a single drop, a single iota into the tax base? Dodges the question. That's the difference between fact-checking from a 
from a right wing media website versus what you just saw on the left, how the lady just called this dude, oh, Trump lies all the time. Yeah, but then the dude called out the inconsistencies on the Democratic side. Y'all don't hold any Democrats accountable for nothing. Democrats lie about Project 2025. Democrats lie about this and that. He called her out, and what she had to respond? Oh, wow. When a, Mer when a Democrat, when a black woman go, oh, wow, she lost a... Hey, there's a few times in my life I made my mom do that. <laughs> it means she had nothing else to say. I'm just saying I'm just saying. That means she had nothing else to say. Because that's the reality of what is going on in our mainstream media. And this is why many people want Kamala Harris to do a serious interview. As you saw from the, the my first video of the day, I will heavily criticize her going on their Call Her Daddy podcast. I'm like, yo, this person is incapable of actually discerning whether you're BSing her or not. And you're taking advantage of that. While you see Tim Waltz, he's getting grilled on all the hard part. Like, come on, guys. Come on, America. You can't reward this. You can't, you can't reward this at all. And this idea that they're going to be tougher on the border, it's nonsense. No, no, no way in hell this administration is going to be tough on the border. You see what they're doing now. Just like you saw how Kamala Harris, with her $42 billion, could not create internet for rural America. They got trillions of dollars to create charging stations. They only made eight. Like... These people, they're going to they're gonna appropriate these funds for certain, for, for certain uses, and just like they did with FEMA, they'll use it for something else. That is the habits that I've seen from Kamala Harris. So I don't care how much money she's going to go into affordable housing. It doesn't mean that houses is going to get built. It just means on paper they have money for it, but that doesn't necessarily mean they're going to do it. And this is my problem with Kamala Harris. This is my substantive criticism of Kamala Harris and her running mate, Tim Waltz. Here's another clip I got before I go into the, her, the, her going on full detail, pushing back on his abortion stance. And in this clip, it will highlight the reason why many Republicans did not want to do the border deal. Vice President has made it clear that she has policies that make a difference. Her border policies are the most Strongest, the fairest we've seen. It's but the now, bill Governor, that you know a lot of people, including your own party, would not join that statement. Mm -hmm. There are millions of people who have come here over the last few years that, um, you know, they they see this as an the open policies. Border. Well, simply, we have a policy. Donald Trump sees it as a political. So look, James Langford in Oklahoma, the Border Patrol agents, the Wall Street Journal, uh, the Chamber of Commerce, all said pass this legislation. You have to have Congress to authorize 1,500 new border agents. You have to have Congress to authorize DOJ to speed adjudications on these asylum claims. Those are things that would actually work. Donald Trump told us for four years he would deal with this. He didn't. He didn't build his wall, 2%. Mexico didn't pay for it. This is a real bill that has bipartisan support, it has the experts on board, and it starts to tackle these issues. And we don't have to resort to demonizing people. We don't have to resort to, uh, to, to making up or crafting stories, as Senator Vance said he did. Those things were not happening in Springfield, but it doesn't mean that we can't pass a piece of legislation to strengthen our border. That's what Kamala Harris is talking about. Well, She's talking Governor, about solving that piece the of, problem. That piece the, of legislation does cut, yeah, include the wall that you guys have been so, um, you've disparaged that. I mean, the vice president has as well. So I don't know if she really intends to move forward with that. But it was negotiated by three or four senators and many Republicans came out against it long before President Trump indicated he didn't like it either. What a fact check. My God. Hallelujah. This is what this is what I want. Hey, give me the substance. OK, you say you make a claim. Hey, what about these timelines and confront it, Tim Waltz? You have to confront that. You have to confront how the conservatives see this issue and how you will be able to debate that. Because as an independent voter, right, end of the day, I can't vote for somebody where they, ne got, they never got pushed by the other side. It makes, no, it makes no logical sense whatsoever. Kamala Harris has never been uh, confronted by the other side, by a representation of the other side. How as an like as an informed voter, I can't make a decision on a candidate that has not been able to answer some of it, their harshest criticism. And their harshest critics are on the other side. Donald Trump has shown an ability to do this. So I don't care. Donald Trump went on CNN, ABC. He's debating the the moderators who comes from an institution that's heavily liberal. Only 3.5% of journalists are Republicans. So there was a 97% chance that the moderator that Donald Trump was debating against was someone who's politically opposition to him. This is why people trust Donald Trump more than Harris. This is my, you know, functional, rational case for why Donald Trump should be president. Because Donald Trump, he'll be the most transparent one. 
he's going to be the one who's held most accountable because the media is not going to. You have this, and this is the this is the main reason why I don't support Kamala Harris. Is I I I see from the media already cover her eighty seven percent of the time positively, positively, and they do, they cover Donald Trump eighty nine percent of the time negatively. So what does that tell me? That tells me that these people are going to hold Kamala Harris with kid gloves, and that's not what I want as a president. I want when she f's up, y'all getting the whole y'all give her the whole wrath of the law, but y'all not. Y'all holding her with kid gloves. You giving you frame it, you frame the questions as positively as you can, and that's what I see from you. So I'm like, no, I can't trust the media when it comes to her. I can't trust the media to hold Kamala Harris accountable when she f's up. Look what's going on with the FEMA situation. I just did a video on the FEMA situation. They're trying to defend her response and say it's political, but they didn't do the same courtesy for George Bush. And time after time and time again, when you just look at it, how Dana Bash did it. Versus how this Fox News contributor is doing it, and she's doing a, a was a Shannon Brim, great job. I bro, even if I wasn't a conservative, I go let's let me lead into more of my uh, independent streak. She's fair, okay. Where's her references? She showed me the references. She's telling me where she's pointing this information from, so I can go validate it myself. She's not sitting there like that lady. I forgot the name from ABC trying to say, oh, Donald Trump is a liar. Subjective. Framing, um, yeah, that's a that's your perspective. But what do you ha what examples do you have that led you to that conclusion? And as an independent voter, that's what I'm feening for. That's what I'm looking for. And since I can't find it, I feel like I give it. The law is there in Minnesota. Abortion Finder, a website that helps women find access, says abortion is legal throughout pregnancy in Minnesota. There is no ban or limit on abortion in Minnesota based on how far along in a pregnancy you are. You signed the bill that makes it legal through all nine months. Is that a position you think Democrats should advocate for nationally? Look, the vice president and I have been clear the restoration of Roe versus Wade is what we're asking but for. This is a and then yeah, you guys saw this one. So that goes beyond Roe v. Wade. Regardless if Roe v. Wade was banned, Roe v. Wade pretty much allowed you to do whatever you want already. Like, it didn't stop you. Like, think about it. These people say that when Roe v. Wade got removed, somehow it was going to threaten their rights to choose. But it, it like the, nothing happens at all. The law didn't get restricted. Nothing. It was just like okay, keep carry on. Trump, Trump, remove it. Carry on. Oh, look, Kansas is trying to ban abortion. Look, Georgia's restricting abortion. Look, Florida, they went from 15 weeks to six weeks. You worried about what every other state is doing instead of your own state, and that's the problem with abortion. This is why abortion is actually in an extreme position. Because like colonizers, you want to dictate what other states are allowed to do. Well, if one state's allowed to ban abortion, let them ban abortion. But no, you can't let the, the, the other states and their citizens and their people and their constituency decide what they want to do with the issue. You want to dictate what they should do with the issue. Make it make sense. New York's codifying uh, abortion as a state constitutional right. Y'all not, y'all, I don't hear any extremism. Oh no, this is not fair. We don't have a unit right. No, because all you care about is abortion access. You don't care about people who have an ethical problem with abortion. You guys can't even define when life begins, and you sitting here making these uh prescriptions to how we should approach abortion when you're not even sure yourself if it's a life or not. Make it make sense. This is why I laugh at these people who who, who are so pro-abortion. Like you, like, do you actually know what you're advocating for? Or are you advocating out of ignorance? See no evil, do no evil, right? You like this, oh, la, la, la. that's why you don't want... Ar my biggest argument to a lot of those abortion stuff, and then I'll stop, I'll continue with the video. My argument has always been, if before you get an abortion, I, I, may, I required you to do an ultrasound, what do you think will happen? You think there'll be more abortions or less abortions? If you had to give, in, you know, if you had to give your uh, estimate. Everyone guess less abortion. I ask why? Because you humanize the thing. Because you see the thing. You'll be like, oh, my God, it has little feet. It has little hands, those arms. Oh, look at that head. I'm still going to get an abortion. No woman can do that. I mean, there's some women who can do that. But I'm just like making a general assessment that, hey, if you got to observe, if you see the reality of what you're actually doing during the abortion, right? Uh, sorry, guys, it's a little graphic. But during the abortion, you sit back and you see in real time what they're going to do to the kid. You think a lot of women are going to be like, stop, don't do it. Or you're gonna be, or they're gonna be like, carry on, go, go, go. Oh, it's so gruesome. Like, imagine that. That's why I said, like, a lot of the pro-abortion, y'all, y'all don't even know what you're advocating for.
But y'all, yo, women's right to choose. Yeah, women's right to choose to do that. And then they get mad when J.D. Vance call it barbaric. Is there any reason why J.D. Vance would want to say, why J.D. Vance say abortion is barbaric? Okay, watch, watch an abortion procedure, and then you'll see why he says that. It's about, like, I like Democrats. They always want you to understand it from their perspective, but they never want to understand it from the conservative perspective. And I think that's the biggest problem driving the division in our country. But I digress. Let's continue. A goes woman's far beyond right Roe v. Wade. To make her own choice. The law, does, the law is very clear. It does not change that. That has been debunked on every occasion. But, but wait, look, this wait. Is a, but let's let's, let's agree. What you win. signed is there's not a single limit through nine months of pregnancy. Roe had a trimester framework that did have limits through the pregnancy. The Minnesota law does not have that. This puts... This puts the decision with the woman and her health care providers. The situation we have is when you don't have the ability of health care providers to provide that, that's where you end up with a situation like Amanda Zaworski in Texas, where they are afraid to do what's necessary. This doesn't change anything. It puts the decision back on to the woman, to the physicians. And we know that this is simply something to be brought up to be very clear. Donald Trump's asking for a nationwide abortion ban. Wait, and again, we he, don't see this he as a winning campaign. That he will not sign a national abortion ban. Are you calling that just, it's a flat out lie? Yes, it, it, of course. And See, and that's a more honest, look at how she pushed back. She just asks, well, I'm just, she just, she just asking questions to get clarification from him about concerns many people have about him. This is what people want Kamala Harris to do. This should be Kamala. Kamala should be the one doing this interview with Shannon Brim. Because the way she carried it, 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 it's not hostile. She's just like, yo, look, um, there's a discrepancy here, what you're saying here. And the reason why I get so annoyed is that liberals and Democrats pretend that there's no other reason someone Roe v. Wade's removed. Trump said, hey, it's not a fair deal for pro-lifers because pro-lifers can't, uh, where well, they have the cultural weight to actually push for an abortion ban. Let the states choose. How is that an anti-abortion? Make it make sense. To me, that's a neutral position. You're not either for or against abortion. You just believe, hey, every state should make a decision on what they want to do. Here in Florida, where I live, it's six weeks. In California, it's a lot later. In Minnesota, up till birth. Up till birth, but like 38 weeks, I think, 34. I don't remember the specifics. Someone's going to fact check me in the comment section. I don't care. But it's still in the tri third trimester. Baby is sustain life sustainable on its own, but you still want to kill it. Okay, because it's in your body. Okay. They talk about body autonomy, but it's not. The abortion issue is not about a body autonomy. It's not. It's about your rights to do to someone else's body. And this is the argument that conservatives have. It's rooted in human rights. What right do you have to violate the human rights of another person when you made a lot of decisions leading up to that point, which is the case for most abortions, 99% of abortions? Medical, incest, grape, all that is less than 1% of abortions. Total. Out of a million abortions, about a thousand of those abortions have anything to do with rape, incest, and the life of the mother. But you want to use those thousand abortions per year as justification for the rest of the 99999,000th abortions that's happened in, this, in the United States of America. Make it make sense. When you get the data, when you get the evidence, when you get the facts, this way you, it, it leads you. It leads you to the, the conclusion that, hey, look. If abortion was really about protecting the life, uh, incest, and grape, then you should be able to agree with pro-lifers as a middle ground to allow abortion only for those specific cases, which is Donald Trump's actual position on abortion. But what the left do? He's going to sign an abortion ban. Lie. Even pro-lifers are getting on Donald Trump's case, but you still think he's going to push for an abortion ban? Make it make sense, Democrat. Make it make sense, liberal. Just want to craft the narrative. You just want to control the perception. You just want to control how people perceive Donald Trump's words because you're resting on the conditioning of the media calling Donald Trump a liar. This is what you're relying upon. But then when you get in an unfriendly territory, when someone just gives you minor pushback, you crumble like we're about to see in the next minute. And, and uh, Senator Vance has in the past said so too. Now look, they may see this as an election issue. We see it as a right of women to make their own bodily decisions. And that's what the states like my state have the ability to put that in. States like Georgia force women to cross the border and then we have a death uh, 
of Amber Thurman. So let's be very clear. Trying to cut hairs on an issue on this is not where the American public's at. They want the restoration of Roe versus Wade. Vice President Harris said she would sign it. That's what we'll do okay. when we're elected. But to be clear, the Minnesota law right is women. far beyond Roe v. Wade. And about the Amber Thurman case in Georgia, her family has, and it's tragic, she is a young mother who left behind a young son. But what her family has said is it was a complication from an abortion pill that she received and she didn't get proper... Abortion was the reason the lady died. If she never went to abort her kids, she will still be alive today. Some people will call that karma. I'm just, I'm just saying. It's tragic, yes, but it's karma. Hey, I can't afford this kid. Whatever her reasons was, elect, it was elective abortion. It wasn't because her life was in danger or anything like that based on what I can see from what my research. But she went out, got an abortion pill. Complications happened. And instead of Planned Parenthood getting sued out the wazoo, they want to sue the doctors because the doctors didn't know what the hell was going on. They're like, yo, what's wrong with this lady? Is she, isn't she pregnant? Like, we, we, we don't know what's going on. And the lady don't know what's going on either. But they're getting sued for malpractice. And there's a lot of stories. Like, this is pro-lifers. This is the pro-lifers angle. Pro-lifers say that there's a lot of angles of Planned Parenthood cooking the book, mask what they're doing, try to be as, uh, uh, trying to be as le less transparent as possible to hide a lot of the things that they're doing. Remember stories of them having dead fetuses in the in the trash can, dead baby parts in the trash can, right? Trying to hide this stuff. And it showed that it was late-term abortions that they were being done in these hazmat waste uh, facilities by, by Planned Parenthood, right? You see videos of women calling into Planned Parenthood staging late-term abortion stuff. Nowhere in America is a woman carrying a pregnancy to term and, and, and asking for an abortion. That is not happening. It's insulting. The care clinic in Bethesda, Maryland. Thank you for calling Karen. How can I help you? I am looking to have an abortion. How far along are you? I'm 34 right now. I am in a pretty desperate situation. My boyfriend is kind of out of the picture now, so I don't really have any support. An abortion at any stage is actually much safer than delivering a term pregnancy. It's a four to five day procedure. We do some basic lab work on you and start to dilate your cervix. After that, we do what we call the fetal injection. A needle is inserted through the abdomen and into the fetal heart where lidocaine is injected and that will completely numb the fetus so there's no pain. And then after that, we inject a medication called digoxin and another medication called KCL into the fetal heart, which will slow and then stop the fetal heartbeat. And then on that fourth day, depending on how your cervix is dilated, we'll break your water and then we'll give you a medication called misoprostol. Misoprostol will sort of induce contraction and increase the dilation of your cervix. You're going to have contractions and cramping and then we'll assist you in sort of pushing in the induction and then remove all of the products of conception. You're definitely going to feel discomfort and cramping and a lot of pressure, but we do give you fentanyl and Versed during the procedure. We specialize in later trimester care. Our doctor is very well versed in what he's doing and he's very good. So I'm not like a rare situation. Y'all help no. women this late in pregnancy all the time? All the time. And the Democrats still sit here and try to play denial. Before pro-choicers get in, pro-abortion people get on my case about how, oh, it's a woman's right to choose. A woman should be able to choose when she becomes a mother. She should have control over her reproductive rights. What about the men's reproductive rights? What reproductive rights men have compared to women? List out all the things you think women should be allowed to do, and then list out all the things that you think men should be able to do. Because it seems like this abortion issue is women wanting to eat their cake and eat it too. You want to be able to decide whether a baby gets to live or die, whether you become a mother or not. But a father cannot make that decision himself as well. It seems like you want the right to choose for yourself and for your partner or the person you allow to impregnate you. You got all kinds of means of prevention, right? You had condoms. You got a plan B. You have all kinds of means of a prevention of a pregnancy. Yet you got pregnant and then you don't want to take responsibility for what happened for the product of that. And it's why many conservatives see it as you just trying to shriek responsibility. Call it a spade a spade. At least accept it. Then we can have a more honest discussion about the, the, the abortion discussion. But instead, you'll try to moralize it as if it's some right that you have to decide whether you want to be a mother or not. But you don't give that same courtesy to men. This is why many men do not consider feminists 
to be good partners. Because if someone sees you as is inherently bad, if someone sees you as inherently less than, like, you can't have no healthy relationship with a feminist. If they're thinking like this, they want equality, but then you, 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 you highlight an inequality, and their answer is, well, it takes two to tango, but it doesn't take two to decide whether a fetus, using your words, whether a human offspring gets to live or die. Only one person gets to make that decision, but it took two people to make it. Make it make sense. But body autonomy, such a disingenuous argument. Such an emotionally manipulative argument. And I don't go for it because at the end of the day, when I do these videos, I take my feelings out of it. Right? I don't know people. I, don't, I just go by the data. The data suggests that people, are, the majority of abortions are abortions of healthy babies due to women wanting to. Not because they were in life-threatening situations, not because they were in an abusive relationship, not because they were raped, not because the baby was uh, genetically not liable, because they wanted to. And until abortion people have that honest discussion, I don't think they'll, they, they, they will have no means of argument to actually make a solid case for why they should be allowed to have abortions. That's just me. Proper care when she went to a Georgia hospital, which had multiple opportunities to intervene there. Her own attorney, the family's attorney, says it wasn't the Georgia law, it was the hospitals. What he claims is malpractice, not treating her when she clearly showed up in distress and still had the byproducts of her pregnancy because of that rare complication from the abortion. Imagine, this, he's shaking his head about statements made by the lawyer. Make it make sense, guys. But that's your interview. That's what Tim Wall said. Let me know your reactions to it. Let me know your thoughts on it uh, in the comment section. I'd like to hear what you guys have to say. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Appreciate you guys watching to the end of the video. And I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.